Hello, my name is Ted Quokovalis. I'm from Duquesne University in, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I'm going to discuss uh, geometric algebra as a tool for calculations in geometric optics. So geometric algebra is a type of real valued Clifford algebra. And the nice thing about it is that it becomes a superset of many common math tools. Uh, you can include vector algebra, things like Lie algebras, tensor analysis, uh, Grassmann algebra, quaternions, uh, lots, of, lots of things like that. And so in this talk, what I'm going to do is motivate uh, why we want to use geometric algebra for optics. And in particular, I'll show you one new result that can be used without prior knowledge of GA, but GA is used in the derivation. Uh, for more detail on how to use GA, please see the references at the end of this talk. And for an extended version of this talk, uh, you can look at my website here. To give you an idea of where we're going, at the end of the talk, I'll derive a point transfer matrix that takes a point in the object space of an optical system and transforms it into the corresponding uh, point in the image space. So the outline of my talk, I'll talk briefly about what geometric algebra and projective geometric algebra are. Uh, the latter is the flavor of GA that we're using in our calculations. Uh, and to do that, I need to define homogeneous coordinates just to give you the, the context for the tools we're using. Then I'll work through an example of ray tracing by hand. In other words, what we do in freshman physics with a, a ruler and, and pencil, but I'll put equations to it. Uh, then I'll describe these ray transfer matrices and point transfer matrices that I alluded to on the previous slide. And I'll conclude with some comments about how these things generalize the, to the three dimensional case. So geometric algebra is a real valued Clifford algebra that's defined by a geometric product that is associative over vectors and a symmetric bilinear form, in other words, a metric. Uh, so that's a lot of math speak. Uh, but one of the key results is that the product itself is not closed over vectors. So in other words, you can multiply two vectors together and get something else. Uh, you may get a vector, but you may also get uh, a scalar piece or a bivector piece, uh, et cetera. And so in other words, we relax our usual rule that you can't add scalars to vectors. And we allow these more uh, composite objects to be valid mem uh, pieces of our math. So why would we want to use this in optics? Uh, well, some nice things happen. So rays, points, areas, and volumes, they have distinct representations in uh, geometric algebra, but they obey unified transformation laws. In other words, uh, reflections, rotations, and translations are represent represented the same way for each of these geometric objects. Uh, it has some nice numerical advantages. So these transformations uh, can often be written with faster code and less round off error than more conventional methods. Uh, the geometric constructions, you know, typical of things that we're going to use in optics, uh, have simple algebraic representations. Uh, and these, for example, the two examples I give here of an intersection of two lines or a line connecting two points are actually just represented by products in, in GA. Uh, so one nice thing here is that often we don't need to explicitly calculate distances and angles. Uh, they can just kind of be absorbed into our algebra. So that saves some of the headaches uh, that students often face of you know, remembering trig identities and those sorts of things. In particular, here we're using the flavor of geometric algebra called projective geometric algebra. Uh, and this is basically GA using homogeneous coordinates, and I'll define what that means in a little bit. Uh, the nice thing here is that linear transformations in PGA are isomorphic to what we call collineations of projective geometry. Uh, and operations like projections, reflections, rotations, and translations can all be done with simple products. So there's many different products in geometric algebra. I won't go through these in detail, but just to realize that all these things have nice geometric interpretations. Uh, and so we can do things like uh, join two points to produce a line, or find them where two lines meet, uh, just with a simple product. The mathematical language we use in PGA is homogeneous coordinates. So for example, we can represent a line by a vector ABC. And if we multiply that vector by a scalar, uh, then we get an identical geometric element. Uh, so that leads to this idea of the normal weight of the line, which we define to be the square root of A squared plus B squared. And if we'd like, we can uh, normalize the line by dividing by the, the norm. And then the value of C represents the distance from the origin to the line. And the values of A and B are the signs of the angles between the line and the corresponding axis. Similarly, we can represent points as uh, bivectors. These have three components, W, X, Y. And here we define the norm of the bivector to be uh, the value of W. And then if we divide by W to normalize it, uh, then we get the usual representation for X and Y. 
just to give you an example of what some of these PGA calculations look like, I've worked through a simple example here. So this is what I call ray tracing by hand, which is what we teach in freshman physics uh, for drawing the rays through an optical system using uh, just a ruler. And, and so here we have a thin lens and an object point, and then we put out three rays, one that begins uh, perpendicular to the lens, R1, R2 goes through the center of the lens, and R3 uh, goes through the front focal point of the lens. And then we trace how those behave on the, on the image side uh, of the system. And so what I have here on the right are the equations to do all those calculations in PGA. So for example, R1, what this equation says is that we, we take the plane of the lens, walk out perpendicularly to the point O, and that, that's what gives us R1. And then we can do things like intersect uh, the rays with the surface of the lens, uh, project rays uh, between two points, etc. And then at the end, we take the intersections of two of those outgoing rays, and that gives us uh, the final image point. Uh, and we can you know, insert numbers here so you can see how that works out. Uh, the key point here is at the end of the day, we get uh, a bivector for the image. And then if we normalize that bivector, we can read off the location of the image and its height. For more complicated optical systems, we can represent the ray transfer matrices uh, using geometric algebra as well. Uh, so here's our, our kind of standard thing. This is uh, can be found in typical optics textbooks like Pedrati or Hecht. Uh, I should note I'm using the convention in Pedrati, which is a slightly different than that in Hecht. And so again, this relates the ingoing rays and outgoing rays uh, by a matrix multiplication. So the key result that I mentioned up at the top of the talk was that we can also uh, derive point transfer matrices uh, using the rules of, of geometric algebra. And so that gives us a new matrix, which is used to connect object points to image points if those points are represented in homogeneous coordinates. Uh, so the, the way this works, so first of all, we wanna write our rays as vectors in PGA. And so this is simply just rearranging and identifying those elements A, B, C that I discussed uh, when I defined our lines earlier. And then I can just uh, basically a append an extra row and column to our ray transfer matrices uh, to see the correspondence with the, the notation we have above. Now that we know how our rays transform in homogeneous coordinates, we can construct the point transfer matrices. And we do this through the outer morphism property. What this means is that if we want to find the linear operator that acts on a point, we can treat that point as the intersection of two lines, uh, transform each of those lines individually, and find where the new lines intersect. And if we do that, we can do that most simply by looking at each of the unit vectors for the, uh, the, the bivector representation and breaking that down into its uh, component uh, vector products and running those through the matrix. And that'll give us a new column in the bivector representation. If we put all those uh, three uh, unit vectors together, we can get the final representation. Once we calculate how the three unit bivectors transform, we can stitch those back together and make our matrix that operates on any arbitrary point. And that's what we have here. And so again, if we take uh, the representation of the point and homogeneous coordinates from the object side, multiply it by our new matrix, we get the resulting point and homogeneous coordinates on the image side of the system. Uh, or here's a, a more complex example. I pulled this example out of HECT. Uh, so here we're given the ray transfer matrix for a particular photographic lens. And uh, you're asked to find the image from a particular object. And so, um, you know, in heck, this takes about a page and a half uh, to get the answer, uh, but we can do it here in, in two lines, basically, just by forming the point transfer matrix, uh, multiplying that into uh, the object point, normalizing the result, and then we can read off the position in, in X and Y coordinates of the, uh, the final image. So we can look forward to eat 3 d uh, this works in 3D, but now vectors equal planes, uh, bivectors equal lines, and skew line pairs, which is a new thing, and then trivectors represent points. So these are the ideas of the ray transfer matrix and points transfer matrix also work in 3D. Uh, we can also uh, represent Gaussian laser beams using skew line pairs after uh, a paper by Arno from uh, the 1980s. And then we can follow the same transformation rules as geometric rays. And then lastly, we can do more complicated things like keeping track of aberrations. So there's a, a lot of fertile ground to, to look at here. Uh, so I just want to conclude with a list of references, particularly this webpage, bivector.net, uh, that's put together by uh, Stephen DeKenink, and he has some great uh, tutorial videos on using geometric algebra, and a few other references here. 
Uh, I will stop with that and thank you for your time.